have all the things he had in store but now he leads me higher than I've ever been before things are not the same anymore anymore things are not the same anymore and things are not the same anymore anymore i never dreamed that i could have all the things he had in store but now he lifts me higher than i've ever been before things are not the same anymore anymore But oh, what a change there's been For I listened and I heard Someone knocking at my heart For the first time in my life I've let him in Two eyes that once were blind Can now see clearly And the sky that once was dark Is daily bright a soul was bound for hell now can sing all is well and a life that once was wrong is now made right and things are not the same anymore i never dreamed that i could have all the things he had in store that's now he is Riches. All at once I heard everything But I can't forget the days Living in my sinful ways I didn't even have a song to sing I could not afford a drink of water Poverty was the only life I knew Though I used to beg for bread, every day I now am fed. All oh, things are passed away, all things are new. And things are not the same anymore. Anymore. I never dreamed that I would have all the things he had in store. But now he lifts me higher than I've ever been before. Things are not the same. I could 
have all the things he had in store. But now he gives me higher than I've ever been before. This I know the same anymore, anymore. This I know the same anymore. And this I know the same anymore, anymore. I never dreamed that I could have all the things he had in store. Just now he gives me higher than I've ever been before. This I know the same anymore, anymore. This I know the same anymore. And this I know the same anymore. I never dreamed that I could have all the things he had in store. But now he lifts me higher than I've ever been before. This I know the same anymore, anymore. This I know the same anymore. The people of God said. God bless everyone. Yeah. Happy to see you again. Yeah. Are you happy to see me? Yeah. Those who came um, a little bit uh, behind time will appeal to you that you should please make an effort to be here in good time. And the Lord will double your blessing. I'll see you next time when you come here, you will be here in good time. Yeah. God loves you. And God is going to bless you beyond your expectation. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for our leaders, our workers, our pastors, our ministers who are here tonight. And thank you for all your people all over that are hearing the message as well. We're asking, Lord, enrich every life what you're watching tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. We're coming to Luke chapter 9. And from Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 49 all through to verse 56. Luke chapter 9, verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. 51. And it came to pass, when the time was come, that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And he did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that will command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Those are the verses we are looking at tonight. Many times we have heard about sanctification. But we have heard about sanctification from a personal perspective. I need to be sanctified so as to be holy. I need to be holy because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I want to see the Lord on the final day. Because of that, I personally must be holy. We've applied sanctification to our personal lives. And I want to get to heaven. And because I need to get to heaven, I must be sanctified. All that is true. And all that is noteworthy. But now, 
we're considering sanctification as it relates to the member and the world that is our impact on the world our responsibility on the world if we are sanctified it helps the ministry that the lord has committed into our hands towards the world we're considering the minister the minister like john like james if the ministers are sanctified apostles disciples and followers of the lord jesus if we're sanctified it will help us to help the world and reach the world actually when jesus prayed about sanctification john chapter 17 verse 17 and verse 18 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world even so have i also sent them into the world you see the connection there sanctification and the salvation of the world sanctification and penetrating the world with the word of god verse 17 sanctify them and immediately after that sanctification as thou hast sent me into the world even so send i them into the world look at first john chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 3 first john chapter 4 and here we're reading from verse 17 First John chapter 4 verse 17 it says herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world you will see that in the passage you have read concerning John and James they were not having the same mind as the mind of Christ they were not having the same love for the people as Jesus had and sanctification makes us to have the mind of Christ and makes us to want to be like Christ act like Christ tonight as I look at Luke chapter 9 the message is sanctifying the church to save the nation sanctifying the church to save the nation sanctification purifies the heart sanctification provides holiness sanctification prepares the believer for heaven but then we need to understand sanctification makes us useful in the ministry of kingdom harvest sanctification makes us useful in the ministry of kingdom harvest sanctification is essential for a private member when you think of a member private by some personal life this is just the member i must be sanctified as a member as the member of the body of christ so i can get to heaven that's a private member now sanctification is indispensable in the public minister a minister who is to relate to the public a minister who is to think of the public sanctification is very important for him the sanctified minister the sanctified worker the sanctified soul winner will help the ministry of christ on the other hand the unsanctified member the unsanctified minister the unsanctified soul winner will hinder the ministry of christ you can see it here because john and jim said was well, someone casting out devils they didn't do anything wrong that is those people casting out devils they did it right and they were effective but because they are not following us because it's not me doing it because it's not us doing it they are doing it to us said no you don't have any right to do that you must not do that sanctification will clear that away from our lives not only that they wanted to call fire down upon the samaritans because these samaritans said jesus will not pass this way and because of not passing through that parcel of land they said that's enough to make us eliminate them eradicate them destroy them annihilate them unsanctified people will hinder 
the ministry of Christ. Sanctification brings great gain in the salvation of cities and nations. Lack of sanctification in members, lack of sanctification in ministers will cause great loss of souls. Tonight, the message is sanctifying the church to save the nation. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the unsanctified comments in the spirit of the old dispensation. The unsanctified comments in the spirit of the old dispensation. Because we're referring to what Elijah had done. Shall we command fire to come down upon these people, consume them, get rid of them, burn them up? Just like Elijah did in the old time on sanctified comments in the spirit of the old dispensation. Point number two, the unusual conversion of Samaritans through sanctified obedient disciples. These people, they wanted to burn up. Eventually, because Jesus went another way, their lives were still preserved. And at a later date, these Samaritans became converted. That's the reason we need to be careful. When we are sanctified, we'll not do any havoc, any evil to unbelievers. We'll not say, look at what they have done. Look at what they have done. And because they have done this, we're going to react. And our reaction will make them unsaved. When we are sanctified, it will, will age and help the conversion of those Samaritans, the unusual conversion of Samaritans through sanctified, obedient disciples. Point number three, the unmistakable consequence of sanctification in the new dispensation. As we talk about sanctification, what's the result when I'm sanctified? What's the result when you're sanctified? If we as members of the church, if we as ministers of the church are sanctified, what's going to be the result, the unmistakable consequence of sanctification in the new dispensation? Point number one, the unsanctified comments in the spirit of the old dispensation. Let's come back to John, sorry, to Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, we stopped him, and we told him, You cannot do that. You must not do that. Because he followeth not us. Look at that verse of scripture. And look at that comment. And look at that attitude. This is Luke chapter 9. The Lord Jesus Christ had sent out 12 of them. If you look at chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together. And gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick look at the six and they departed and went through the towns and preaching the gospel and healing everywhere 12 of them they had gone out everywhere and he preached the word and he came back now it was very good and they had a good result but now they saw one person casting out devils just doing the same thing they had done but they saw that this person casting out devil was not one of the twelve and so they forbade him you understand what they were thinking us twelve and no more we can do it we can finish it why do we need another hand why do we need another person to come in? We are the people that you do. So without even talking to Jesus about it, their master, they stop that person, you must not. We forbid you, you must not do this. Number one, they didn't understand the mind of Christ. Number two, they didn't have the same mind of Christ. They didn't understand that the harvest is great and plenteous. And the twelve of them could not finish. Come to chapter 10. Luke 
chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 1 after these things the lord appointed 70 other 70 also look at that they only saw one person and they said no we're 12 we don't want to be 13 we don't want to be 14 we don't want any increase we can do it stop casting out devils but jesus already was even preparing in the very next chapter he was sent 70 others he needed so many people but they did understand the lack of sanctification hindered them to understand we need more hands verse, uh, uh, verse 1 after these six the lord appointed other 70 also and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come therefore said he unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest after the 12 after the 70 he even still needed more but they didn't understand when well, we are not sanctified even though we're serving the lord even though we're doing the work of god we will think we are the only people to do this we're looking at luke chapter 8 luke chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 37 in luke chapter 8 verse 37 and the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings uh, round about besought him to depart from them for they were taken they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away saying return to thine own house and show how great things god has done unto thee and he went his way and he published throughout the whole city he published throughout the whole city look up here for a moment none of the 12 apostles disciples could do this because jesus was not accepted there and they said depart from our coast because their swine their pigs had been had perished in the sea and jesus told this man not one of the 12 not one of the 12 he said go back home and tell your friends what great thing the lord has done for you and we're told that the whole city now he told them what great things jesus has done for him look at verse 40 and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the people gladly received him because of the ministry of this one person that was not one of them john and james james and john they had forgotten that and they said we forbid them we will stop them because they are not part of us but jesus made use of them I pray Jesus will use you. Yeah. But Jesus will also use other people. So that you are not saying because they are not part of us. Because they are not of this small group. We forbid them. They cannot do anything. They will not succeed. You will succeed. They will succeed. Yeah. It came to pass that when Jesus was returned. The people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. Because of the mercy of this one person who was not part of them they said we didn't know that is the way it is we didn't know that's a good thing that jesus has done we didn't know he was such a great a miracle worker and they were not waiting for him we must not forbid other people we are coming to john chapter 4 john chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 8 in john chapter 4 reading from verse 8 it says, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. The disciples, the 12 of them, all of them, they just went to the city and they went to buy food. And this was the city of Samaria also. And now you understand something. Look at here from verse 27. In verse 27, and upon this came his disciples, the 12 of them, and they marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? Look at this now. And the woman then left her water pot 
and went her way where into the city and said unto the men come see a man we told me all things that ever i did is not this the christ then they went out of the city tell me and came unto him look up for a minute all the 12 had gone to that same city all the 12 had seen all those people they didn't say a single word they went to buy food even from the people there their food was good enough for them to eat and their food was good enough for them to buy they bought the food didn't talk to anybody about christ about salvation and then they came back this woman who was not part of them this woman who was not part of the 12 she went to the city and what these 12 could not do all together this woman did and many people came they became convinced that this is the savior the savior of the world that's what jesus said don't forbid them. You see somebody speaking about Christ. You see somebody preaching Christ. You see somebody doing what you are not doing. And it's not part of this team. Don't stop them. If you're going to do anything at all, help them. Encourage them. They may not have the name of your denomination. They may not have the name of your little group. Do not forbid them. We're coming back now to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 54. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that will command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? Again now, uh, the Lord Jesus and his disciples were passing through one of the villages of, of the Samaritans. And because Jesus was going in the direction of Jerusalem, they said, no, it must not be. Sinners will talk like sinners, and saints must talk like saints. Sinners will talk like sinners, and they will think like sinners, and they will behave and react like sinners. We must not act like them. That's why we're saints. That's why we're children of God. That's why we're believers. If they have rejected Christ, we should find a way of connecting with them so that they will receive. But now, the spirit of the old dispensation, spirit of the old dispensation, he called down fire. That's Elijah. And we now want to follow him and call down fire. We need to understand that the New Testament is different from the Old Testament. Why? The Old Testament uh, people, the kings and the prophets, they had a ministry. Their ministry towards the unbelievers because their cause of iniquity were full was to destroy them. All those Canaanites, all those Hivites, all those Amalekites, destroy them. That was their own mandate. In our own case, our mandate is not to destroy them. Our mandate is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so, we must not say, these Old Testament people, this is what they did in their mandate, old dispensation. We now, we must recognize this is our mandate. Let me show you an example. We're looking at uh, First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 5. First Chronicles chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 25. First Chronicles chapter 5, we're reading from verse 25 and verse 26. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 25. And they transgressed against the God of their fathers and went a warring after the gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed before them. Look at verse 26. And God, the God of Israel, tell me the word there, stirred up the spirit. Underline those words, stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tilgath 
Pilnesar, king of the Assyrians, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Helan and Hebel and Hara and to the river Gozan unto this day. Now look at what happened there. God stirred up the spirit of these two kings against um, Reuben, Gad, have the tribe of Manasseh, and conquered them, defeated them, and carried them away captive. That's the Old Testament action when the spirit is stirred up. Now, let's come to the New Testament, the spirit stirred up. We're looking at Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 16. Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, tell me what follows. His spirit was stirred in him. You see the same language. In the Old Testament, those kings, their spirits were stirred up. And the spirit being stirred up, they went into warfare. They went into defeating those two and half tribes because their spirit was stirred up. Now, we have the same situation here now. That Paul, the apostle, had his own spirit stirred up when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now, in the old dispensation, if the spirit is stirred up like that and they're totally given to idolatry, what do you think they'll do in the Old Testament? Which war against them? Kill them, finish them, exterminate them. And then all the idols, they bought everything. But now, new dispensation. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. His spirit was stirred up. That led him to preaching. That led him to evangelism. That is our mandate in the new dispensation. That is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So if you see a situation similar to the Old Testament situation, and then you say, this is what they did. That was their mandate. This is what we now do because we have a new mandate. God will give us understanding. Look at verse 22. Then Paul's church. The midst of Mass Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I pass by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. He wasn't angry, his spirit was stirred up. He was concerned. He was passionate. He said, this must not be. But that spirit being stirred up made him to preach to them, whom therefore he ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Look at verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God went out. But now, tell me, commandeth all men everywhere to do what? to repent. That is the mandate in the new dispensation. So we cannot say, Lord Jesus, would you permit us that we command fire to come down upon them? No, we cannot do that. You say, but that's in the Bible. Yes, because they had their mandate. The mandate that God gave a person like, for example, Samson, is that the Philistines will be destroyed. That was his mandate. And the mandate he gave David is that those Philistines, they should be conquered, and they will not bother the children of Israel. That was the mandate. The mandate for the church at this time, for the Samaritans, for the pagans, for the idol worshippers, for those in high places, and for those those in low places, for wicked people, for people that have done things the children have done, the mandate we have now at this time is going into all the world and preach the gospel to how many people? Every creature, every creature, everyone, they will hear through me. They will hear through you. 
they are here through our church in Jesus' name. Let's come to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse uh, reading from verse 13. Now, when we talk of uh, what Elijah did, understand? Now, John the Baptist was sent into the world before the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, look at the mandate. Even though he was to come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And they were told in verse 14, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from the mother's swamp, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That was his mandate. His mandate. He will turn the hearts of the children of Israel unto the Lord. Look at this. And he shall go before him tell me read it out aloud now in the spirit and power of elijah and this person that came in the spirit and power of elijah did not call fire down why not why didn't you call fire down don't you know you have come in the spirit and the power of elijah our ministries are different. He was in the old dispensation, and the mandate he had is different. That's what he was to do to those unbelievers. But now I come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. I'm not to call down fire because when the new dispensation is now to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord make ready a people prepared for the Lord I pray that the mandate God has given us we will fulfill it in Jesus name Amen. you will fulfill your mandate Amen. the Lord will reward your effort we're coming to point number two the unusual conversion of the Samaritans through sanctified obedient disciples let's come back to Luke chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 54 Luke chapter 9 verse 54 and when his disciples James and John saw this they said Lord wilt thou that would command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did which thou that will command fire give us chance we got the faith because in this same chapter they had gone to the mount of transfiguration they went with jesus and peter james and john were on that mount from what they saw they even saw elijah and they saw moses and how they came down and then they saw this what an infant infantry how is it they will not allow jesus christ to pass through and so give us chance now we have the faith we can do it and we'll call them fire all we need to do is to get the permission from you now you see if they called down fire to burn up these people those people will die in their sin where would they go they will go to hell but jesus said look at verse 55 but she turned and rebuked them and said ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of you are here on this side new testament new dispensation and then your mind is still in the old testament and your attitude and your plan is still to act as if you were in the old dispensation now as we talk about uh, these samaritans what's the mind of god for the samaritans let's look at this uh, popular passage 
in Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 6. And many people have read this verse 6, but just to read the next verse and the next verse, uh, they fail to do that. And so they didn't understand what will happen when the new dispensation comes. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us his son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who is this talking about? Jesus. About Jesus. Verse 7, of the increase of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon the king upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment that's, and with justice righteousness and justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this now look at verse 8 the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it has lighted upon Israel. Look at this. And all the people shall know. Even Ephraim and the... Tell me out aloud. Inhabitants of Samaria. That is, Christ is coming. Unto us a child is born. Christ is coming. Unto us his son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And then the wonderful things he will do. Israel will benefit. Samaria will benefit. But you see the disciples, they, don't, they didn't read everything. The plan of God, the program of God, even for the Samaritans. That's why, because of a little sin, they said, let us call down fire and we're going to destroy them. I pray God will give you understanding. Now, you've heard about uh, the special service tomorrow that uh, the um, officials of the government, that they are coming. Some people have the mind that we are the Israel of God. Anybody outside the premises of Deeper Light Bible Church, they draw a circle, we are inside. All those outsiders, they are Samaritans. And so, how are we going to allow a Samaritan? Pastor, tell me. Some of those uh, Samaritans, uh, you know the things they practice, syncretism and all that. Are they going to come inside our church, church building? God does not live in physical buildings. He lives in the heart of his people. And the church building is there to bring in people, whoever they are, so that they can hear about Jesus Christ and turn to the Lord as their personal Savior. Now, all these Samaritans say, Pastor, do you read the newspapers? Yes, I do, like you do. And uh, do you know some of the things that people have done, like the Samaritans have done? If there's anything at all, don't you know that God is a God of judgment? And we need to call down fire upon these people so that we'll have food in the nation to eat, we'll have a good road, we'll have security, we'll have peace and everything. The thing to do, why are we getting near there? Why are we allowing Samaritans to come inside our place and we're even showing some respect to them, we're praying for them, interacting with them, let fire come down. Uh -uh. That's the old dispensation. And I pray that our spirit, our heart, will be the heart of new dispensational people in Jesus' name. Amen. He wants them saved. Look at Saul, Paul, the apostle, who became Paul the apostle. Saul had done atrocious things. He himself said, I commanded them, I compelled them to blaspheme. I even took them into prison. And when they were going to kill their Stephen, I put my voice to that. And yet, Jesus reached out to that soul. So, the attitude of a sanctified minister, the attitude of a sanctified believer, is that Jesus died for them. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And I pray that God will give us the might of Christ. Amen. 
Uh, look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both, you're telling me, number one, Jerusalem. Number two, in all. Number three, tell me. And in Samaria. What ye, Jesus, has said, okay, you want to try your faith, exercise your faith, call down fire, and all the Samaritans will be burnt up in fire. How about this one now? You will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. If we members talk about sanctification and we're not sanctified, our attitude, our comments will show when it comes to the fact now that we're to reach out. To those Samaritans and they were to forget all the things they have done all the things we've heard about them I want to show them the hand of love we're coming to Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 5 and Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them no fire but forgiveness no fire but favor no fire but salvation no fire but the water of life that he gave to them he preached the word christ unto them and the and the people with one accord give heed to do things with philip speak hearing and seeing the miracles which he did and the unclean spirits they had unclean spirits in samaria but he didn't call fire down on them because they had evil spirit they had familiar spirit they had witchcraft they had occultism, they had this and that, but the evil spirits came out and crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed of them and many taken with pulses that were lame were healed. Verse 8, everybody, one, two, three, go. What city was that? City of Samaria. City of Samaria, no fire. There'll be no fire coming from you. You will not burn up your neighbors. Amen. You will not burn up the idol worshippers. Our mandate is to go to them and reach out to them of the gospel. Now, let's see John. Things have happened that now changed John. We're coming to verse 25. Verse 25, and they, this is talking about Peter and John. If you see that from verse uh, 14. Look at verse 14 now. The apostles, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that, that, Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto them. Who did they send? Peter and John. John is not sanctified. And so he's not going to call down fire on anybody now. And so they said, you remember John? Those people that you sure are to bring fire, to burn up. Yes, I remember. Thank God. He didn't allow us to do that. Now they send them to Peter and John. Look at verse 25. After they finished there, and they, when they are testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel. Tell me. In many villages of the Samaritans, we will not call down fire on anybody. Amen. We're looking at Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and uh, Samaria and they were edified there were churches now planted in Samaria and it says you are walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost they were multiplied the Lord has shown us what a sanctified member of the church will do and what it should not do and then for those of us who are ministers we need to have the mind of Christ we need to have the motive of Christ. We need to have the mercy of Christ 
upon those Samaritans. And if you're going to preach the gospel to every creature, you cannot antagonize them. You cannot curse them. You cannot be angry at them. A sinner is a sinner. Yes, they have done evil things. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we saints who are the salt of the earth, we're not going to segregate ourselves, isolate ourselves from the people we will touch them. You will touch them. I will transform them in Jesus' name. As the um, officials of the Lagos State Government are coming to our church tomorrow, and then they're also coming with executives of, you know, other places, and even some who are foreign, like ambassadors of other countries, they're coming. And uh, we show the highest respect for their position. You see, there is the person of this individual. There's also the position of this individual. That same individual, as a person, this is who he is. As a person, this is who he is. But as his position now demands, we show the respect and our ushers say, praise God for our ushers. I know you've gone there to rehearse and to do things uh, that ought to be put in place. We are our very best. And then all our, you know, members of the choir, anyone that is ministering, tomorrow everything we're doing we're just so happy that they are there we're not asking for anything it is a part of fulfilling our mandate we're going to fulfill that mandate and we unite together so that their hearts will be open to the gospel in Jesus name have the mind of Christ and have the motive of Christ, have the mercy of Christ, have the ministry of Christ, have the message of Christ, the meekness of Christ, the mandate of Christ. This work will prosper in your hand. Amen. It will prosper in my hand. Amen. And I prosper in our hands together in Jesus' name. Point number three now, point number three, the unmistakable consequence of sanctification in the new dispensation we're now in the new dispensation what is the consequence of sanctification what does sanctification do for you and for me we're going to use the letters of the word sanctification sanctification so you might want to write that down sanctification sets us free from self-centeredness self-centeredness you know james and john they don't follow us they're not part of us this is ours and we're to do it all alone by ourselves self-centeredness sanctification will set us free from all that philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 3 Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 let nothing be done through strife or being glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than themselves we've seen somebody casting out devils esteem them better than themselves they don't care for title they don't care for position and yet they're doing it they don't care for recognition and yet they're doing it you are an apostle you have a title you are following jesus and you peter had walked on the water these people didn't have all these opportunities you have gone to the mount of transfiguration this person did not have that opportunity and yet is serving the lord understand this consecration and believe that jesus christ appreciates his sacrifice he says let nothing be done through strife or being glory let each esteem other better than themselves look at verse 21 for all seek their own and not the things that are jesus christ that's lack of sanctification seeking their own their own name their own promotion their own opportunity and others must not touch that thing they must not be part of that thing self-centeredness number two anger anger the anger we're talking about here now is not uh, you know the personal anger that somebody has offended you that's not the anger we're talking about it's the something that the people will call they say we ought to be angry the church ought to show that the church is angry against uh, these people how can you honor people that are kind of dishonest they're evil they're bad they're wicked if there's anything at all don't you preach holiness and don't you preach righteousness 
righteousness, we must have righteous indignation and be angry against the people. Look at Luke chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 25. Verse 25 says, Now his elder, his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he had music and dancing. And when and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry. And he was angry. The young man did not offend him. All his complaint is, look at the life he has lived. He's gone to the far country. And he's got this, he's got this, he's wasted all his resources. A foolish boy, a foolish a, a junior brother. And look at what he has done. And my father has forgiven him. And my father has brought him in. He was angry. And he would not go in. That's unsanctified attitude. You know, some, some people may even have that kind of attitude. Did you hear that our own pastor, who is, you know, a holiness preacher, did you hear that he even shook hands with somebody? And that kind of shaking hands, how is it? Anointed hand. Deeper life hand. To use that hand and shake somebody, doesn't he know what is happening? We don't want that. We don't want that. If it is like that, I won't come to church next Sunday. If it's like that, I won't go in at all. I'm not a worker anymore. I'm not a minister anymore. And I don't even want to be a member of this church anymore. If that kind of thing happens, unless it comes to tell us, I am sorry. That's the anger of somebody who is not sanctified. He doesn't want to come home anymore. He doesn't want to be in fellowship anymore. He doesn't want to relate with the people of God anymore because he is angry. Look at Jonah. Jonah also was angry like that. You will not be angry. Yeah. I wanted a good, good amen. Yeah. We're looking at Jonah chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. What happened? He had announced to the Ninevites, in 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And then God forgave the Ninevites, because the king said to all the people, let us repent, let us turn away from everything evil in our hands. And God saw their repentance, and he repented of the evil. He wasn't going to destroy them anymore, because of that, Jonah was angry. That kind of anger shows a lack of sanctification. You were a sinner, and God had mercy on you. He is a sinner, and God is having mercy on him. You were a sinner, and somebody came and preached the gospel to you. If the person who preached the gospel to you frowned at you and abused you and pointed at you, you're a wicked man, you are going to hell, probably you'll not accept the gospel from that person. And we're doing the same thing to other people now. The same love God has shown to you is showing to other people, and you you are angry. That means there's no sanctification there. N is narrow mindedness. Narrow mindedness. Narrow mindedness. Look at it. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 9, verse 49. And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not us. Because, because that's the only reason he followeth not us. That's narrow mindedness. When we're sanctified, all that narrow mindedness, the Lord will take away. You're no more kind of so restricted and so narrow. You're only thinking about this is the only way. Number four, see carnality. Carnality. We're looking at First Corinthians. You see, when we're sanctified, carnality will be dealt with and carnality will be uprooted from our hearts you will not be carnal yeah. we shall not be carnal carnality look at first corinthians chapter three first corinthians chapter three verse three 
for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? And walk as men, you talk as men, you say the same thing your neighbors are saying, and you are having the same attitude your neighbors are having. You know? That means you are walking as men and you are carnal. Look at verse 4 For while one saith, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are ye not? Canal, you become a party man and you have party spirit. I am of this, I'm of this, I'm of that. That's being canal. And so, we as a church, and we as ministers, and you as members of the church, you open your heart to everyone. They're coming from that party, they're coming from that party, they're coming from that tribe, they're coming from that tribe. You open your heart to everyone because Jesus died for everyone. It is lack of sanctification when there's carnality. I'm of this, I'm of this, I'm of the south. I'm against uh, the East. No, we're not against anybody. Are you against anybody? No. Are you against the Yoruba people? No. You're against the Igbo people? No. Ah, you're against the Fulanis. No. You're against the Elsa people? No. Ibibio ethic. No. You love everyone? Yes. Carnality says, I'm of this, I'm of this. There'll be no carnality in our hearts. Yes. In our church, there'll be no carnality. Yes. We open the doors of the church for everyone, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. T tradition, tradition. There are some people they are wedded to tradition. Tradition is their problem, and when tradition is a problem, there's no sanctification yet. It, it when sanctification comes, it will take all that tradition away. In Galatians chapter one, I'm reading from verse fourteen. In Galatians chapter one, verse fourteen, I'm profited in the Jews religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers traditions of the fathers of the elders there's a tradition in our place a tradition in our place and this is the tradition in our church in our denomination this is the way we do things and that's the way we have always done this and that tradition we must hold firm how about the salvation of the people? If the tradition of a denomination or the tradition of a Christian or the tradition of a religion negates the salvation of the people, tradition will go, salvation will remain. Yeah. Number six, I is indignation. Indignation. We're coming to Luke chapter 13 in Luke chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 14 Luke chapter 13 verse 14 it says in verse 14 and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Look up here for a moment. You know, in our church, I've had people, they say, Pastor, our church is presenting the full gospel in a balanced way. They say Sunday is for preaching. They say Monday is for study. And they say Thursday is for miracle revival evangelism. They say, and we we keep firmly to that. So if on Sunday you then preach, and then instead of you know calling somebody else to finish the preaching or to finish the prayer and you turn it to miracle revival, then somebody says, What's happening here today? Today is Sunday. Why didn't the pastor wait for Thursday? The pastor is carried away. And because he's carried away, now he's seeing somebody there uh, lay your hand on yourself and somebody there, your blind eyes will open. Today is Sunday. And so if you do that on Sunday, indignation of the Pharisees. That's the lack of sanctification. To put God in a box. And to say, this is the way it has always been. This is the way it must be. And if it is different, there's indignation. I pray God will help us. 
and God will iron all the rough edges of our life, of our thoughts, our thinking. He'll make everything to go away in Jesus' name. Now, 7F is fault finding. Fault finding. We're coming to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 2. Acts chapter 11, verse 2. We're talking about the evidence of sanctification. When there's sanctification, then all these things are going to be removed. They'll not be in our lives. They'll not be in your life. Look at this in uh, chapter 11, verse 1. And the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, the day that were of the circumcision contended with him, seeing that wentest in to men uncircumcised and did eat of them. Peter, we don't care what happened there. Miracles, speaking in tongues, Holy Ghost baptism upon those people, Gentiles, all that that's between them and God. But we heard that you sat with them and you ate there. True or not true? And then he had to be explaining to them. Think about that. When Jesus had told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature cornelius and his house as part of the every creature now and the holy ghost came from heaven and told them i sent those men go with them and now he went with them and when he came back that went testing to the uncircumcised and did eat with them but peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expanded it in order unto them there must be not fault finding fault finding okay uh, he has done this he also is at fault. He has done this. He also is at fault. That's fault finding. And then number eight is inhibition. Inhibition. And that means a kind of restriction you give yourself, which the Lord has not given. Inhibition. All that sanctification will take away. And I pray the Lord will walk in every heart. We're coming to we're coming to John chapter 4, verse 27. John chapter 4, verse 27. It says in verse 27, And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, Jesus, the Son of God, the creator of heaven and earth. By him, the whole universe is upheld. Jesus, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. What did they expect? That Jesus will not show and reveal salvation to the woman? They were surprised. They marveled that he talked to the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? And why talkest thou with her? The woman, they were having this restriction inhibition about, look at verse 28. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And then they went out of the city and tell me, came to him look up here for a moment let's say for example the disciples 12 of them if they had not gone to buy food in the in samaria and they were with jesus christ and this woman came and look at the way she dressed look at her appearance and look at it it looks like this woman is not a clean woman uh, because uh, looking at her this must be one of those a woman that go here and go here and go there let's say that they were with jesus christ when the woman came and jesus asked them uh, peter um i want to talk to this one what do you think god forbid James, John, look at that woman coming. I'm going to shake hands with her and I'm going to present to her the water of life. God forbid. And then, Thomas, what do you say? I doubt. You see, inhibition. And we must be free from all this if we're going to help the people. If we're going to get the people saved, 
Thank God, many people are going to get saved through you. Yeah. You know, they come, they come. And sometimes, you know, if they come to our church, somebody is not uh, wearing hat or wearing scarf, and she's a woman, and somebody is going to say by the gate there, are you coming to church or going to a nightclub? Where are you coming? Please uh, go and borrow something there to cover. Are you going to do that tomorrow? And then we'll see somebody is coming with, uh, you know, slacks and all that. We don't do that. That's we. We are saved. We are sanctified. If we are really sanctified, allow them, allow them uh, to appear. They, they don't know. They don't understand. And this is the first time some people are coming inside a deeper life, a church building. We we'll welcome everyone. Yeah. Okay, make it personal. I, I welcome everyone. And will be so happy that they are there to hear the word of God and awareness, the awareness of salvation will be created for everyone. Amen. Now, see customs, customs. We're looking at Acts chapter 21. These are the things that disturb churches. These are the things that show the lack of sanctification customs. We're looking at Acts chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 20. Acts chapter 21 verse 20. Acts chapter 21. And we're reading from what verse are we looking for? Verse 20. It says, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and they said, thou seest brother, how many thousands of Jews are there, there are, which believe. And they are all zealous of the law. They shouldn't have been. Are they not born again? Zealous of the law. They should have forsaken Moses and forsaken the old covenant. But you see, these believers in Jerusalem, they were zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee, Paul, that thou richer teaches all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children and neither to walk after neither to walk after after the customs the customs salvation yes custom sanctification yes but custom evangelism yes but don't forget custom it is that that shows the lack of real in-depth sanctification when we're sanctified all the customs of the people the customs of moses of the tribes and everything everything is gone and they are gone from us in jesus name now he is adamant attitude adamant attitude being adamant adamant uh, when we say somebody is adamant look at this in acts chapter 10 acts chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 11 acts chapter 10 verse 11 and he saw heaven opened heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him and it had as it had been a great sheet neat at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air the lord was showing him to reach out to the gentiles and the, and the kind of picture of the gentiles this way and there came a voice rise peter kill and eat but peter said tell me not so lord i accept you as my lord but this time i have a better opinion i accept you as my lord but this time i'm more righteous i cannot do that you permit that you allow that you are my lord but not so for i have never eaten anything that is common or clean and the voice speak unto him again the second time what god has cleansed that call not thou common this was done how many times the man was adamant i said no lord the lord said it again second i said no lord the lord said it the third time i said no lord and the vessel was received up again into heaven now while peter doubted in himself 
am I going to do something like this? Am I going to allow this? Am I going to, you know, reach the Gentiles? What vision he had seen, what he should mean? Behold, the man that was sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was so named Peter, lodged there. Look at this now. The man was adamant. He was adamant. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Are you still doubting? You saw this vision from heaven. Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Tell me the rest. For I have sent them when we're sanctified that attitude of being rigid adamant no what i'm going to do that look at the scriptures i see the scriptures but no look at the leading of the lord i see that but no being adamant is a lack of sanctification and when we're sanctified, all that adamant, adamant attitude, everything will vanish away. And do you know that being adamant can hinder our own relationship with God? Zechariah chapter 7. Zechariah chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone lest they shall hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts therefore it is come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear because they were adamant so they cried and I would not hear says the Lord of hosts. 11. T. Tempestuousness. Tempestuousness. When somebody is tempestuous, it's like, you know, the temper of his thunder. It tells us in um, Mark chapter 3, verse, 14, verse 17. Mark chapter 3, verse 17. And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, his son named Bonages, which is, tell me, the sons of thunder. When we're sanctified, all that will be mellowed. Temper will be cool. You'll be calm. That boisterous attitude, tempestuous attitude, a kind of a terrifying temper, all that will vanish away. I isolation isolation we're coming to acts chapter 9 acts chapter 9 reading from verse 26 acts chapter 9 verse 26 isolation that is taken away when we are sanctified it tells us in acts 9 verse 26 and when saul was come to Jerusalem, he has said he tried to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that was a disciple. Ah, uh -uh, stay away, stay in your place. Don't come in here. Our fellowship is all right. We have all the talents we need, and we have all the people we need, and we have grown. We're in our thousands. We're all right without you stay outside they isolated the man and they isolated the church so that Saul will not be there and look at the soul look at the soul he was the one that became the greatest of all the apostles that's the reason why we should not allow unsanctified attitude unsanctified nature and unsanctified behavior to hinder a soul from becoming Paul you will not be a hindrance I will not be a hindrance. Amen. Say it for yourself. I will not be a Acts chapter 11, verse 25. Acts chapter 11, verse 25. 
Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. They had relegated Saul to go back to your city, go back to your time, to your um, Tarsus. And he went back to Tarsus. He would have been living a private life there, but now Barnabas went there to seek for him. And it says in verse 26, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves to the church and taught much people. It was through the help of that Barnabas now that Saul became integrated, incorporated, instead of being insulated and isolated. And it says the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch will be sanctified. Oh, obstinacy, obstinacy being obstinate we don't want it and we're not going to have it whatever they say whatever they do here is where we stand we're taking our stand against god against christ against his own people look at third john third john just one chapter verses nine and ten first john verses nine and ten i wrote unto the church but do trephes who love who loveth to have the preeminence among them received receiveth us not wherefore if i come i will remember his deeds which he doeth preaching against us with malicious words and not content their ways neither does he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that watch and he casteth them out of the church that's been obstinate when we are saved and sanctified that obstinacy will no more be there amen. give me a good amen. amen and nationalism nationalism well this nation a peculiar nation a godly nation a nation that is transparently holy and righteous and we need to guard and protect that nation but they forget that God wants everyone hearing the gospel look at this Acts chapter 10 verse 28 nationalism all that the Lord will take away he'll do it in our lives he'll do it in our hearts He'll do it for everyone in our church in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 10 of Acts, verse 28. And he said unto them, this Peter talking to them now, because even though the Lord had convinced him and conquered him, and even though he had left Joppa, now he's coming to a Caesarea and he's meeting with the Corinthians and his people. Look at what he said. He said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful an unlawful sin for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Hey, Peter, you're not a Jew first now. You're first of all an apostle. You're first of all an ambassador. You're first of all a soul winner. You're first of all a Christian. Before you think of being a Jew, as you think of yourself, you're a Christian, you're a Nigerian, which one comes first? I said you're a Nigerian, you're a Christian, which one comes first? A Christian, a Christian, you're going to heaven. Your citizenship is in heaven. And if you're thinking about anything at all, you're not thinking, I'm an Igbo man, that's not the first thing. I'm a Yoruba man, that's not a first thing. I'm an Osa person, that's not a first thing. The first thing is that you have eternal life. You belong to Jesus. You are following Jesus. If you're thinking about yourself at all, the very first thing is praise the Lord. I'm a Christian, I'm on my way to heaven. Somebody there, I'm on my way to heaven you'll be on your way to heaven in Jesus name but look at, look at what Peter is saying he said unto them you know how that it is an unlawful sin for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean then don't mention that thing again anymore be a christian and remain a christian 
I said, be a Christian and remain a Christian. And I pray the Lord will sanctify us through and through in Jesus' name. We'll be free of self-centeredness. Give me a good amen. amen. Free of anger. Amen. Did I hear you? Amen. I'm free of narrow-mindedness. Give me a good amen. amen. You know, we are and nobody else. We are the only people going to heaven and nobody else. Not like that. We'll be free of carnality. Amen. We'll be free of tradition. Amen. We'll be free of indignation. Amen. We'll be free of fault finding. Amen. We'll be free of inhibition. Amen. Free of customs. Amen. Free of adamancy. Amen. Free of tempestuousness. Are you here? Good amen there. Amen. No thunder in our language. Amen. No thunder in our temper isolation insulation will be free in jesus name Amen. obstinacy i said obstinacy Amen. no 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 whatever they say no you'll not be like that Amen. the lord will soft in our hearts and the Lord will sanctify our hearts and the Lord will do what he needs to do so that real sanctification from heaven will be in every heart and every life in Jesus name Amen. nationalism we are this nation we are this nation and if I'm to go to that other place no 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 this is the only place I can stay and this is the only thing I can do all that will vanish away in Jesus name what's going to be the result if the church is sanctified for the salvation of the nation what's the result revelation chapter 7 revelation chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 9 after this i beheld and lo a great multitude which a great multitude which no man could number at present now we can number the people we can number the converts we can number the members but god is waiting for a great multitude that no man can number of all nations of all kindreds of all people of all tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our god which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts living creatures and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped god saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our god forever and ever amen, amen. and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these that are arrayed with white robes and whence came they and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said unto me these are they your comfort these are they our members these are they all the people that will come to know the lord as their personal savior in days our disp dispensation these are they which came out of great revelation and have washed their robes and have made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of god you'll be there yeah. our converts will be there and many of the people who are coming tomorrow as the lord touches transforms their life saves them they'll be there in jesus name and they serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst anymore neither shall the sun light on them or nor any heat and the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes yeah. the lord will bless you yeah. 
the Lord will reward you. And as we join with Christ and we love all these, um, all these traits of the unsanctified life, unsanctified heart, unsanctified character, as we love them to pass away, we are cleansed with the blood of the Lamb. The Lord is going to use us to bring a great harvest into the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sanctified, holy, set apart for the Lord and walking for the Lord without any restraint of the old dispensation. We come to the new dispensation and every blessing of sanctification, holiness, purity, transparency, everything the Lord wants to do, He will do in every life. Yeah. Let's rise up and tell the Lord, take all these things to the Lord in prayer. Don't take them for granted. We'll see what the Lord said he will do, what he said he will do. And what sanctification takes away from our heart, away from our life, away from our attitude. Let the Lord do it. Let's see that there's real sanctification in every heart. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and it will do it. Sanctification, 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 purity of heart that will help us to actually win souls into the kingdom. And all these traits of the unsanctified life, unsanctified heart, all the traits the Lord will take away and the Lord will glorify himself in every one of our lives.